I don't believe being a medium that my job is to prove anything to anybody. That is so messed up. Did you hear the tape recorder stop? The freaking tape just stopped. Mid-sentence, the tape just stops. It became rather disturbing. This is real. I believe I am psychic. My first prediction, I am either gonna fly or ruin that family's picnic. Hey, you've ruined our picnic! Psychic! You remember Sally Morgan, the fake psychic? I've spoken about her before. Well, there's a recent article, which I'll link in the description, you know, the whole crotch bar thing. Basically, a person went to her show, they saw that she wasn't doing very well, and then, later on in the show, she gave a reading to someone based on a photo, which is an old psychic trick, and she got all the information wrong, the person told her that she'd got it all wrong. The audience, well, some of them laughed. But then, there was murmuring. There was concern. And she could not convince the audience after that that she was any good. An epic fail on her part, where she could not do the job people had paid their money for. By the same token, I do not say that if I catch a Buddhist priest stealing all the offerings left by the simple folk of his temple, Buddhism itself is thereby discredited. You have people who are critical, even people who've witnessed her work and they are not impressed. They can see through the illusion of spiritual or psychical power, very least not all it's made out to be. Psychic! And then there's the other side of the equation, the other side of the publicity, which I think is actually quite a bit stronger. It's the believers who will simply say, oh, they must be real, I've read their book. And of course, news articles which are completely non-judgmental. You know, it's meant to be news, so with the Daily Echo, in this case, basically doing an article where they just simply have Sally Morgan saying, oh, she doesn't call up the dead. No, they come to her. She's had it since she was nine and so on and so forth, but that is not evidential of anything. What you need to do to prove that you have actual abilities is make specific predi predictions, things that where you can actually be tested on them, things where, you know, it's not just the normal course of affairs is going to result in some bad thing happening to some random person in three weeks. Of course it will. That doesn't prove anything. Plus there's James Randi. I hope you win a million dollars. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, go ahead. I mean, that is something that we would definitely like to know about and, you know, have studied. And if this is something that some people have this ability, we should know about that. That's we're, great. We're just not going to take hearsay so, and we're not going to exactly. take untestable claims. You know, that's, exactly. that's not, we're not being mean to you by doing that. And we're certainly not being ignorant. We're actually doing the smart thing, which is waiting for actual valid evidence. Tape just stops. <laughs> It seems like with theatre shows that practically everything is stacked in the medium's favour. The vast majority of people who go along are believers, or very least, very curious. Believers on some level. Maybe not believers in that medium, but why else would they go to the show? The famous mediums have appeared on TV, radio shows, chat shows, their own TV programmes. They have numerous books, they've been on the radio, they've been in magazines, newspapers, you name it. The internet full of stories about them. Forums discussing their ability, and maybe even friends of yours who might recommend them. So a person goes along to the show, they pay perhaps £25 or maybe as little as 15 depending on who they see and the venue. You know, cost is everything. So they pay their money, they go along, and there's soft music once they get into the theatre. You have perhaps a video playing, or you know, a, um, a projector showing footage of the medium. 
She insists she foresaw the Zeebrugge ferry disaster, Diana's death, and her premonitions of 9-11. And then when the medium comes on, well, it's a room of mostly believers who will accept, or people who are looking for patterns, willing to accept regardless. So, a room of believers, or very least, very curious semi-believers, who come into a room to get some kind of reading from a psychic or a medium. And the reason why they've gone there as believers is because they've already been convinced. They've been convinced by television appearances, radio appearances, magazine interviews, books being sold, and so much more. They've been convinced by the idea of the medium. They've been convinced by the idea that they can do what they claim. Sally Morgan has been challenged time and time again by numerous individuals to prove her ability. Oh, but of course, she does go along to those people who believe in it and try and confirm it by selecting data and not running proper test conditions. Professor Chris French challenged Sally Morgan to do a very basic test with 10 photos to see if she could work out who the photos belonged to in the audience. If she got 70% or more correct, then she would be eligible to go ahead and basically take the James Randi challenge. Sally didn't turn up. She seemed to have no intention of turning up. She declined the offer to test her abilities. Now, this is a woman who specialises, it's one of the things she specialises with, spiritual photo reading. Um, kind of like a form of psychometry, but spiritual psychometry. The idea of reading a photo and the spiritual connection of who is within the photo to strengthen the reading connection. Now she does this regularly in shows, has a bowl of photos, pick out a few and do a reading off that. Now that's her forte, that's her talent. And she can't even do it for 10 people. She can't get seven out of 10. And that's meant to, her, that's meant to be her key talent. Some people would say don't test it, but in the end, if it's important, and if there's any validity to it, testing should be done. Psychic! You said I'm totally a skeptic, the freaking thing stops and then it goes again. The first psychic, a so-called psychic, uh, a trickster, was trying to pretend to guess, I don't know, the name of the sitter's grandfather or something like that. What, what would be the kind of thing they might do? Even guessing the name of a grandfather, if you back up what tends to happen is that the psychic will, if it's with a group of people, throw, it, throw out a name and say, I'm getting the name uh, John or Albert or some name that's sort of suitable for the age group they're working with. Now, that name could refer to a person in the audience who's living, or it could refer to someone that's died, or it could be a friend of the person. You know, it really could be anything. So it's up to somebody to pick up on it and turn it into what they want it to be. And, of course, if they say, yes, that was my husband, then the reader can go, yes, that's right, he's here, he's saying, he's saying, he, he still loves you. By the same token, I do not say that if I catch a Buddhist priest stealing all the offerings left by the simple folk of his temple, Buddhism itself is thereby discredited. 